So this purse measures about 15 inches across and from the tip down is 15 inches because we did squares, right? So it's going to be even. So 15 inches by 15 inches is the size of this bag. That's not counting the handles. It's just from the tip of this granny square to the bottom of the bag. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to build the sunflower tote bag. You're going to need 13 of these panels. So I used brown, yellow, green, and white. You can use whatever colors you want. I used a 4.5 millimeter hook because most of my yarn called for a 4 and a 4.5. So because I kind of wanted it all loosey-goosey, granny squarish, I used a 4.5. Let's jump right into this. So we're starting with brown. I'm going to make a magic ring of seven single crochets. So if you don't know how to make a magic ring, then you can do a chain two and then put all your stuff in the first chain. So seven single crochets inside that magic ring. You're going to slip stitch and you're going to chain two. So we're going to do a cluster stitch on this round. We're going to use this chain two as part of the first cluster we make, so this won't be part of your repeat. Into this chain two space, I want you to yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull it up. Yarn over again, go into that same space, and pull up a loop. So the cluster stitch in this particular pattern is going to be pull up a loop three times. But because, because we're using the chain two as part of the cluster, we're only going to do it twice for this particular space. So yarn over and pull through all five loops. And then you can chain one to secure it. Your repeat starts in the next stitch. So you're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop. So that's three times you've pulled up a loop. You should have seven loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all seven and secure it. So you're going to do that in all the stitches around. That's going to be your repeat. So once you have seven clusters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this here is not a stitch, it's part of your chain. So you're going to slip stitch to the top of that first chain. So let's take care of this thing at the back before we continue, because if we don't, this will continue to just open. So pull it shut as tight as you can, tie a knot with your 
straggler and push it down and then we're going to kind of weave it in. It's going to be super duper tight and that's great. That was my washing machine shutting off. It's going to be super, oh actually it's not shutting off, it's in the rinse cycle. So you're going to have to listen to that for a minute. So it's super duper tight back here. So you probably only have to weave once or twice around. We're going to be tying knots throughout this on our color changes because this is a bag and let's face it, it's probably going to be taken to the beach and everything else. People are going to need to wash it quite often. So, so this is what you should have at this point. That's the middle of your flower. So get your yellow. If you need to make a slip knot here, then you're welcome to do so. I'm just going to put the loop on my hook and I'm going to pull it through there. So pull down on your brown and make it nice and tight. And this is where we're going to tie our pieces. So tie your straggler to your brown. Keep your hook in there so you know how far to pull to tighten that down. And then you can cut your brown off. This double knot is going to, so we're still going to weave this all in at the end. But this double knot, even if your weaves come undone after multiple washes, your purse won't fall apart because this is going to be tied in a knot. And the more you wash a knot, the more it's impossible to open. <laughs> so this is the theory that I have going on in my head. So we're on round two. We've changed to yellow. This is PDF users. So if you join my channel, uh, you get access to free PDFs along with early videos. So you'll hear me talking to the PDF users. <laughs> That'll be the people that are members. You're going to chain two. We're on round two. And it says placing in between clusters. So you're going to put your stuff in between the clusters. So there's no stitches to get into. You're just going directly in between those mounds and you're going to put a one single crochet. You're going to yarn over and put a half double. Then you're going to put a double. And then you're going to put a triple. So you are yarn over twice, go into the space, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. So you pull through two three times, which makes it a triple. You're going to chain three. After your chain three, you're, we're going to do what's called a pico. So that means you're going to come down, you're going to pick up these two pieces of yarn. So that's your chain three. One, two, three. You're going to come down, pick up these two pieces. So kind of a sideways thingy going on. So stick your hook in, grab those guys. You're going to yarn over and slip stitch. And then we do the same thing but backwards. So you're going to do a triple, then a double, then a half double, and a single. So that's your flower petal for the first row. And then you go into the next space and you do the same thing. Sorry, I have such a bad cold. So single crochet, half double crochet, double. Oops, snagged on some brown. Triple. Chain three. Pico. Triple. Double. Half double. And last but not least, a single. So that you repeat all the way around and it should give you seven petals.
I'm on my last cluster. Did my single crochet. My uh, camera loves to shut off at the most inopportune times, but I just left it off. I thought I'd, I'd just do the finish what I was doing. So it gets pretty squishy in here, but it also helps the flower stand up a bit too after it's kind of all done and made. You can push it over. It's only in a space, so it's not like you can't move it over to the side. So I don't think I really need to put my um, last single crochet in here. I'm going to go into the space chain two space so I'm just going into the space and I'm doing my slip stitch so the last stitch didn't get a single crochet but I mean if you feel it necessary you can go right ahead I'm not I'm not really dictating that you can't put it in there I'm just saying it's pretty squishy so that's what you should have at this point so still with your yellow we're gonna chain four And then I want you to pop across to this space in between the flowers, or in between the petals, and do a slip stitch. And chain four. Pop across in between the petals, and do a slip stitch. Oops. And chain four. Oh, that was loud. That was my washer. So I'm on my last one. I'm going to actually slip stitch into that chain. So chain, oh actually, yeah, chain two. I was going to say we can do that after, but it doesn't matter. Chain two now or chain two then after. Um, you're going to pop all your petals through. So all these chains are going to be underneath the, the flower at the back just like that so I did it that way just because it's easier instead of trying to reach around the petals at the back and having to fold them down and it's just a lot easier especially if you're a beginner so so just straighten out your petals so we've already chained two turn my computer back on not that I haven't made 13 of these, I already know what I'm doing, but I just want to be able to read some of this to you too. So we are on round four. In this chain space, so right there, this is where we're going to be putting our stitches. So you're going to put a half double crochet into that space, you're going to put a double, you're going to put a triple, we're going to chain two and do a pico. So a little different from the petals in front, we're only chaining two. And then you can scooch this over make room because it's just in the space so we're going to do another triple we're going to do a double and we're going to do a half double so that's your second petal your second layer um, and we're not chaining one or doing anything we're literally going from the half double back into a half double over here 
in the chain space. Double crochet, triple, chain two, pico, triple, double, half double. So I'm on my last chain space. We're going to change colors. So, we're going to change colors here. I'm going to back out. Sorry, I wasn't supposed to finish that last stitch. So, this is my last double. I'm not going to, or my half double. I'm not going to finish it with my yellow. I'm going to finish it with my green. So, again, I'm going to leave my hook in there just so I know how tight I'm pulling this. And I'm going to tie these two together. Oh, I got the wrong end. And then you can cut your yellow off with the tail so you can weave. We're not slip stitching or anything with um, the green. So um, PDF users, members, you'll see where it says on the end of round four, don't slip stitch here. We're not slip stitching. So round five, we go right into chain uh, chaining five. So I've chained five, my battery shut off. So I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna go in between those two petals. And I'm gonna slip stitch and chain five. Go in between the petals, slip stitch, chain five. One more. This one we're going to go right into this chain space. Just slip stitch. Chain two. And now we're going to flip all this, all the petals through. So we're flipping the green to the back, just like before with the yellow. Here 
we go. So, PDF users, members, we're on round six. I have to chain two. I've already chained two. And in this, let me get my stuff out of the way. And in this chain five space, our first one, so we're not going to start with the repeat because we've chained two and we're going to use that as part of our what we're our pattern, our repeat. So this is not your repeat. Your repeat will start over here. So after you've chained two, I want you to do two double crochets right into that space, chain one, and then three double crochets. Chain one. Your repeat starts now. You're going to do three double crochets. Chain one, three double crochets. So that's your repeat. Three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets. The reason we did only did two over here is because this chain two will act as a double crochet. So I'll repeat that all the way around. So I'm on my last one, and I'm going to be changing to white on my last stitch. This is my last stitch, so I'm going to pull through two, and then I'm going to stop and get my white, and I'm going to pull through the last two with my white. And then I'm going to tie these two together. In a double knot. And then with my white, I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that chain. And I'm going to chain two. So, round seven, the last one members you will see more asterisk sentences <laughs> and actually it's not asterisks it's not quotes it's asterisks but it says referring to the post not the stitches and that's where I say skip to so I say skip to I'm not referring to stitches I'm referring to posts so skip two posts so that's number one we're not counting the posts that's attached to the chain two one and two. So go into this space. Now they're not always going to be spaces you go into and put three double crochets. My battery is going to die again. And then skip two more posts. One post, two posts. So go into that space and put three double crochets. Skip two more posts. So you're going to be skipping this great big space here. One post, two posts, and you're going to go into that space. And we're going to put a corner in here. 
So corner is going to be three double crochets, a chain two, and three double crochets, all in the same space. So that's your corner. Three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. So you're going to skip two posts. So this is your repeat is going to be to skip two posts every time. But we're not just going two groups of three. We're going to do four groups of three across skipping two. So skip two posts and do three double crochets. All in that same space. Skip two posts and do three double crochets. Skip two posts, so that means the big space gets skipped. Skip those two posts and do three double crochets. So now we have three groups of three. We're going to do one more, skip two posts and do three double crochets. Skip two posts and then we're going to put our corner in. So three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. In the same space. Skip two, three double crochets. Skip two, three double crochets. Skip two, three double crochets. Oops. So we only have three groups of three. We gotta skip two more and do another group of three double crochets. I said single, didn't I? So I've got four groups of three double crochets. I'm gonna skip two and put another corner in. So three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Skip two, three double crochets, skip two, three double crochets, skip two, Skip two, so I've got my four sets of three double crochets. I'm going to skip two, so skip this big space and put another corner in. So this last part is different after your corner. So your corner once again is three doubles two, chain two, three doubles, all in the same space. Oh. So because we're coming up to the end here, it's going to change a little bit. So skip two, do your three double crochets. skip two and put two double crochets in this last bit because your chain two will act as the third one because you're going to slip stitch to the top of that chain and it looks like you've got four sets of three. 
So I can fasten off. That's the end. Because all this is tied in a knot, we don't have to worry about anybody washing anything and it coming apart. So you can just weave everything in. This particular one has only been fastened off. So I like to skip that stitch, go into this stitch over here, and then come back behind where you fastened off. That's where you fastened off and go through the front loop. So that just looks like a stitch. I'm going to pop through. I'm going to grab a piece, just one, where I'm going to make a knot. So I'm going to push this knot down as tight as I can. And then I'm going to weave. So now that's secure for washing. I'm super vigilant <laughs> because I've had something come apart before and it really bothered me because it was a little girl with a toy. To make it worse, it was a special needs girl with a toy. So thankfully nothing happened to her. She was fine. Um, nothing fell into her mouth or anything, but still a leg fell off a caterpillar that I made. And uh, mom sewed it back on. Everything was fine. But still, it uh, freaked me out. So now I'm super vigilant when it comes to securing my stuff. That was about two years ago. I go through the pieces of yarn. I just don't go in around them. I actually go through through them because when yarn gets stuck to yarn, it is so difficult. I don't know if you've ever tried to take apart a piece of a project that you were doing and once that yarn gets stuck to each other, it's quite difficult. So I actually go through, <laughs> I go through the yarn. But you can do whatever you want. As long as it's secure. So, um, I'll leave you here because I'm pretty sure you know how to weave. And, uh, you need to go and make 13 of these all together. So, I will put a chapter 2 in this. And that's when we meet back. And we will, so just so it's easier to find, I'll put a chapter two in this video. And I'll put the timestamp in the in the description box, so you can find it easy enough. When you're done your 13 tiles, meet me back here, and we'll get sewing this puppy together. So I will see you in chapter two. Hi guys, welcome back to chapter two. So I am assuming you have all your tiles made. So you need 13. So this is how we're gonna sew together the first five tiles. So like a deck of cards, the number five in a deck of cards. So this raised area I like that, but that doesn't mean you necessarily like it. I can see it better if I do that. It's raised. So if you like, would prefer not to see the raised portion and have it sewn together like this, then you just have to sew these backwards. So first of all, let's get your tiles. You're going to lay them down in a diamond shape. Helps if I zoom out, huh? So you're going to lay your tiles down in a diamond shape. These are all the same size, but 
they're kind of all stretched out because like I said I didn't block any of these so they're all got the same amount of stitches but lay them down I gotta push up here I'll bet all diamonds like this so you're gonna sew here and here only for now so get get some white Make a slip knot. Does say so? Crochet. So if you don't want the um, the raised edge at the front, you're gonna have to put these back to back or front to front. So back to back. So I'm gonna do mine like this to get the raised edge. But if you don't want the raised edge, then you need to do it so that the backs are showing and the two fronts are together if you don't want the raised edge but I want the raised edge so I'm gonna put my two pieces together so corner to corner I'm gonna go into my corner so I'm gonna start with my corners because I mean that makes sense right and I come around I'm gonna slip stitch okay so after you've reattached, both spaces have this space. Chain one space because we did a set, three sets of double crochets. Chain one, three sets of double crochets. So you're going to go through and through. So th the first double crochet stitch, the first double crochet stitch. To, you're going to go stitch for stitch and then you're going to just slip stitch so your chain one space should be chain one space chain one space so just make sure you're going even across the board that's all I'm alluding to I'm not saying it very well and you're just going to slip stitch. So I'm back, I'm over here at this next corner. I'm gonna slip stitch and fasten off. We're, we're gonna try to do this as easy as possible so it's not so confusing. So now you've got these two sewn together. So you just need to tuck your ends away. And of course, I tuck my ends away at the back. So this is slow going. There's a lot of weaving involved. So as you can see, I've got all my groups of threes across from one another, and I've got a raised edge on here, which I super duper like. So that was those two. So we put this middle one back into the diamond shape. So get another piece. You can make this a long tail slip knot, that way you got a little more to weave with. So now we take these two pieces, match up our big space corner, and 
Do a slip knot if I can get it in there. There we go. Make a slip knot. And we do the same thing. So I'm going to come down. Now that you kind of get an idea that I'm doing the five card thing, I'll just go in and out. It's probably easier to see. So again, all your groups of three should line up with that handy dandy space in the middle just so you, you make sure that you're lined up perfectly. And if you've got to pull this back, so I'm on my second stitch of my group of three, pull it open to get find your spot, then do it because it saves making a mistake when you get to the end and go, uh, that's longer than that. So it just saves on the mistake. Try not to go into the space here. Try to go into the chain one space. The stitch, not the space. Try to go into the stitch. And then I back around in my big space. I'll just go into the big space and fasten off. So we've got those two done, or those three done, sorry. Those three now are done. So it should be a V. So we're just going to weave in these two. Alrighty. So make sure you're keeping it diamond shape. And now we've got this one sewn on. And our last one for this group of five, we're going to grab our corners here. There. So our first five are put together. So now all you have to do is do that again with your other five. Weave in all your ends and I'll meet you back here and we'll finish putting the purse together.
Okay, so now that we've got our five pieces together, and our five pieces together, I'm going to set one aside for now, and we can start doing the side and side pieces. So here and here are the only spots that you're going to do your slip stitches. You're going to leave this open because that goes on the other side. So I'm going to have to turn my work because so I'm going to have to start on this side to go all the way across. So again, just use your corners to attach. So now I'm back to my big hole. I'm gonna go into the space and put one in in this corner. I'm gonna go back into the space and put one in this corner. So that should be good enough to sew those corners together. And then I'm just going to continue. So you're basically putting two slip stitches in this corner, but you're going to grab this and then that. There we go. So just like before, we take care of our weaving before we continue. Alrighty, so that's that side done. Now we got to do this right here, exact same deal.
So again, we're at the corner, so you're going to go in and you're going to grab this sunflower corner and you're going to do your slip stitch and then you're going to go back into that corner and you're going to grab that sunflower corner and do a slip stitch. There, I'm all done. My camera shut off when I was just about there, but so again, we weave. Okay, okay. So this is what it should look like at this point. If I can zoom out more, there we go. So this is what it should look like. So you've got three here, one in the middle, three here. So your final piece goes there. Okay, this is what you should have. So, we need to get our other side because we're going to make that do that, but we're going to sew this to this just the other way. So, turn this over just like that. Put this down forwards facing just like that and then this is going to come up and get sewn 
to this and then across the bottoms like that so all these are doing the same thing all these are being folded and sewn so we'll do one at a time as much as that's a pain in the butt we're going to do one at a time just so you understand how things are going to go So let's do the bottom. Actually, let's do the side. Let's turn around. We'll start on the side. So this side is going to fold up like this, right? So let's just pin the corner in place. But we need to first start over here and go along here before we start doing the side. So let's attach into our hole, into our big space with a slip stitch. You're doing the exact same thing, going stitch for stitch. zoom in pull my camera forward zoom in as best I can so this is my big corner here I've got a big space here and a big space here so you kind of have to incorporate all of those together ish so I'm gonna go I'm still on this these two squares so I'm gonna go in and in and do my slip stitch with those two so you're going to kind of need to turn it because now you're going to pop over here, go into this big space and grab this big space and do a slip stitch. Turn it again because now you're going to do all along this folded edge. Still going stitch for stitch to find the right stitch so this is a little slow going because it is difficult to kind of find your stitch right there So I'm going to take my marker out since I really don't need to hold it together anymore. Let me go back in here. So I'm back at my big space. So I'm going to come across here and grab the big space because that's the one I'm working on. And then I'm going to turn it again. Going back into that big space, I'm going to grab this corner of this guy over here. And do my slip stitch. So this is the only part up here that doesn't actually get sewn together. This is where we started 
Oh, I'm not zoomed out. <laughs> okay. This up here is the only part that doesn't get sewn together. This is where we started, so we know where we've started and what we've done. We're moving our way down to the bottom. So again, it's super important that you're not missing any stitches. So, let me come in again. This is my big space. This is my big space. Oh, I lost my... So I'm going to go into my big space and my big space. And then I'm going to pop across here and go into the next square's big space and then back up into the same big space I just came out of. So that's the side. This is the bottom. So before we keep going, I'm going to pin the bottom just so you get a perspective. Of what we're doing. So we're going to come down here, we're going to meet our three corners, and then come back up here, come back down, meet our three corners. It's going to be three corners up here too. Three corners, three corners, three corners. All right, so that's my corner of this, that's my corner of this one, and then I've got my corner here of this one. So first I'm going to do take care of these two because those are the two I'm putting together right now. And then from here I'm going to go into here and then back into there. And now I'm ready to crochet up this way. So I'm going to take my marker out because I don't think I need to hold that anymore. Whereas my battery loves to shut off. So I'm in my stitch before my big space. So on my big space, because I'm doing this one right now, I'm going to go into that big space. Slip stitch. I'm going to go back into this big space and now I'm going to pop over here and grab this one above it. And I'm going to do a slip stitch. And I'm going to go back into that big space and grab the big space of this one over here and slip stitch. And then I'm going to continue.
Now keep in mind, because the, the, these are granny squares, right? So you're going to have these holes. But um, there are bag inserts you can get for purses that are quite convenient. I actually have one in my purse. And uh, you can either line this bag, um, which I'm not going to do because I'm not a sewer. And I would just screw it all up. But um, I have a bag insert that's a little organizer you can get from Amazon, dirt cheap. So I would just stick that in there, especially if you're going to give this as a gift, you know, nice gift to have a little bag insert, hold your sunglasses so you don't lose them and, you know, stuff like that. I'll show you at the end of this video what I'm talking about. So I'm back over here to my big space and I've got my big space up here and a big space here. So again, I'm going to go into this space and go into this space up here because those are the two I'm doing currently. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to turn it a little bit. I'm going to go back into this space. What am I doing? Oh yeah, no, sorry. I'm going to pop across and go into this space this way and go into the space over here that I was just in and do my slip stitches. I got all confused. I was hearing this noise so I wasn't paying any attention and I got confused. So before we go any further, again, I'm just going to give you the perspective of the next side that we're aiming for like that and again I didn't zoom out to do that so this is where I am so I need to come up here and then do the same thing that we've been doing So I'm at my big space. I'm going to go into the big space and go into that big space. And then I'm going to pop across and go into that big space and into that big space I was just currently in. And turn my work again. And continue up to my marker. I'm going to take out my marker I'm going to go into my big space and go into my big space over here because these are the two I'm putting together currently and then I'm going to go Oh gosh, I gotta turn it again. <laughs> I'm gonna go back into my big space. I'm gonna pop over here into this big space.
So I am at my other end. I'm going to go into the big space and into the big space. I think you got it by now. And then pop across into this big space and back into this big space. And then continue. So we're just going up this one side and then we're going to stop so that it matches. I got all this screwed up. So that it matches that side. So we're going to stop right there. So I'm going to put the timestamp in the PDF. Actually, you probably, I've already put the timestamp in the PDF um, of uh, how to put this together so that you can come to the video and watch this part. So our last stitch is going to be in our two big spaces here. And then you can fasten off. So, I gotta straighten everything, push my camera back to the normal position. Alright. So, this is our bag. So, if you want the opening to be bigger, which I don't think it needs to be, it's pretty big. Um, I guess you don't have to go start, you can start down here make the opening bigger but I don't think it needs to be bigger it's pretty big like I could put a flower pot in that it's pretty big <laughs> so that's our bag so now we just got to put handles on it so tuck away your ends here so they don't get in the way of what we're doing So it's up to you what color you want your handles to be. You can make your handles yellow, white, green. You can make your handles any color you want. Let's go back out. I'm just going to do white for my handles, I think. Get that out of the way. So make a slip knot. Make sure it's got a long tail that you can weave in though, like um, after we're done. So we're going to start here on the side of our work. So just reattach anywhere. Reattach with a slip knot. We are going to do single crochets. So put a single crochet into this same space. So that's 17 stitches and we're back around in this big space but I want you to try to go into the stitch. We're going to do um, we're going to do crochet three together. 
just to tighten up this area here. So I'll go into this stitch, pull up a loop, go into this space, pull up a loop. I have got a hair on me that's dry, oh there we go, driving me crazy. And then I want you to pop over here and grab a stitch. The hard stitch grab over here where we sewed. Actually, I went right into that space. It doesn't matter. And then you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all four of those. And that kind of just gathers it together a little bit better here. And we're going to do that on the other side in the same spot. And then continue with your single crochets. And we're at the top and I want you to do the same thing. I want you to try to go into the stitch and then we're going to single crochet two together. So pull up the loop, go into this stitch over here, pull up the loop, yarn over and pull through all three, I think there was, and that pulls all of that together and then you can continue your single crochets until you get down to your middle again and we'll do three together. So it should be another 17 stitches. So we're back down at our corner, or our, our corner, it's not really a corner, it's a, I don't know. So we're going to do single crochet three together. So go into the stitch, pull up a loop, go into the space, pull up a loop. Then over here, I'm going to just go into the space, yarn over and pull through all four. And then tighten it up pretty good. And then 17 single crochets back up. That's my 17th stitch. So we're back around to where we started because there's my thingy on bobber. So we're going to do SC two tog, single crochet two together to finish this round. So go into the stitch, pull up a loop, go into the space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, tighten her right down. And then I just want you to go in here and slip stitch to join. So now that we've kind of made this a little more solider, solider, is that a word? I have to change my battery <laughs> and uh, we'll do the next round when I come back. Alrighty, so round two. Oh my gosh, all right. So round two, we're still going to do single crochets. So just chain one here. We're going to be, okay, so we're going to be crochet, uh, single crocheting all the way up to this corner to start.
single crochet two together here because we're just kind of keeping with the theme Because we SC2 tugged before, this one only had 16 stitches. I'm pretty sure. Let me recount those. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. We're going to SC2 tug this as well. And now we're going to make our handle. So I just want you to, let's say we chain. It all depends. A medium, I think a, a small handle would be about 60. I'm going to guess um, a medium one would be about 70 and maybe 80 for a long handle. I'm going to do 70. Matter of fact, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll do 70. So I'm going to chain 70. I'm just making this part up as I go along. That's my 70. It's pretty long. So I'm going to pop across. Oh gosh. So I'm going to pop across. Just make sure you're keeping this somewhat straight. I'm going to have to zoom out because. So pop across, keeping your chain nice and straight. Okay, I got to I got to redo that <laughs> because I wasn't Let me zoom in. This is difficult. Everything's in the way. So when I come back around with my chain, I'm going in from this direction. I'm going in on the side, but on this side of my sewing. So I'm still staying on the same side. So I'm going to go in this way. I'm going to pull through and I'm going to do a single crochet. But before I start going back up, I'm going to go into the next stitch and I'm going to go into the purse again in the next stitch. If I can get in there, holy cow, that's tight. Why is that so tight? Well, let's go into that same stitch then because that stitch is too tight. I'm going to pull through and I'm going to do another single crochet. So that kind of strengthens the hold that this has with the two single crochets in it. And now I just go up back up the chain which now should be 69 stitches. So I'm back around to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing um, as I did on the other side to strengthen the connection. I am going to go into this stitch and I'm going to go into this stitch and I'm going to pull through to strengthen that connection. Because if there's any kind of weight in this bag, you certainly don't want this to be pulling through. So um, this side we haven't done. A second round for so this is where we're going to start our second round on this side and then when we come over here to the oh sorry when we come over here to the other side so we're just going to single crochet we're going to do our two single crochet two together come back up and then we're going to start here and we're going to chain another handle and do the exact same thing we just did so single crochet down to your center so 
So we should have 16 stitches. We're going to SC2 tug, just like we did before, and then we're going to do 16 stitches back up. Let me get it on camera. So right here, you're going to go into this stitch, pull up a loop, go into this stitch, pull up a loop. That's a small stitch. And you're going to pull through all. It just keeps this from popping out. So if we keep this nice and tight, it's just going to be normal. It's not going to pop out at either side. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I have a cold again. So let's do our 16 single crochets back up. So that's my 16th stitch. I'm going to go into here and I'm going to pull up a loop and I'm going to go into this shared space where I was with my other one and I'm going to pull up a loop and I'm going to SC2 tog those because that's what I had done on the other side. And then I'm going to go instantly into my chain 70. So that's my 70 that I have. And again, I don't want you to twist this. So make sure it's nice and straight. And you're going to come in on this side, going from outside to inside, right next to your piece and you're going to attach. And then again, using this next stitch, kind of go into the same space. Oh. No, oh, let's try this again. That didn't work. using the next stitch, not the one I'm in, <laughs> go into the next space. And you can pull through. So, oh, no, go in there. I'm gonna single crochet all the way back up. So I'm all the way back around. Let me come in here. So now we're just going to focus on just going up and down the um, handles themselves. So I'm back around. Now I just want to do my, I want to do a two single crochet together before I start my next round. So I don't know if you saw what I did. This is kind of where I joined, right? So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to pull up a loop. And then I'm going to go into the first stitch of my next strap. And I'm going to pull through all three loops. So I'm just joining those two handles together. And then I'm just going to go all the way back up this other handle. So putting the handles together like this, it just provides strength on this corner. Your handles are still going to be separate because we're not going up and down that many times. So anyway, just crochet back around here and I'll meet you there. So 
So I'm back around to my other side. I'm not sure what I did here, but it looks twisted. But anyway, let's try to let's try to deal with it. So I'm going to go into my next stitch. I'm going to pull up a loop. Then I come over here to what should be a stitch. I'm just going to force my way in. And then I'm going to pull through all three. So single crochet to tog, and then we start building our next row on our next handle. So I'm back around. I don't think these are thick enough. Personally, for me, if you're fine with it, you can fasten off anywhere you want. Um, I'm not. I'm going to go around one more time. Now, you don't have to do what I'm going to do here. You can just keep going with your single crochets. But I'm going to single crochet three together. And then I'm going to continue again just strengthens these two ties so I'm going to come around I'm going to do the same thing on the other side this is my final row so I will meet you all the way back around you can do your single crochet three together over here if you're doing what I'm doing and I will meet you back around to where we started and we'll fasten off. So I'm back around and three rows is good enough for me for my handles. So I'm just going to go into the center there and I'm going to fasten off. So a decent weaving tail. So let's take a look at what we've done. So we've strengthened our handles by crocheting them together like that, but it doesn't stop you from having plenty of room because you can just fold your handles back since we've created these little things. You can just fold your handles down and you've got plenty of space to get into your purse and then your handles come back up for carrying handles. So. Um, this part tends to look funny when you're holding it. Let me show you this way. So when you're carrying it, this part's going to look funny here and here. But, I mean, really, is it going to be that noticeable? That's the only thing. But, I mean, it does strengthen the hold. Especially if you're packing this full of stuff beach stuff or or whatever so um, and plus it folds right down and the handles get right out of the way when you need to use the opening so those are the handles I chose if you don't like those there's plenty of videos out there that have handles on the bags so <laughs> let me get back to what I was doing besides putting a bow or something on there um, is an easy fix to uh, make it look decent. So as far as your fasten off spot, go into your next stitch. You're going to go through and then you're going to come down through the front loop of that one. So once you pull, it just looks like it's a stitch when you're done. And then you can go back here and you can weave. And again, me with my knots, I'm going to make a knot to secure all that. Just because, like I've said already, the washing aspect, people are going to be washing this bag probably a lot. So our bag is all done and I just wanted to show you the 
These handles are probably going to continue to twist around. But so I just wanted to show you what I was talking about as far as the little insert here. So this thing, let's move this out of the way. So you can buy these little purse inserts. They normally go in purses. So I've got, you know, my my ID. Well, it's not. It's an insurance thing, but there's nothing in it. Um, but I got my pick for my hair. You know, some sunglasses in here. All these little pockets. And then I've got some CDs for the car. My wallet. Pens. Some ear f earbud thingies. Actually, I could use those. And so... I didn't want to lose that, so I pulled it out. So this has all these pockets on either side. I'll get a receipt in here I don't need. And then you've got these zippered pockets that are absolutely huge with great zippers. The zippers are nice and, and thick. Huge pockets on the side. And then if you wanted to expand it, you just pop these open. Now, I, I'm not getting paid to say any of this, but they have buttons on the bottom and the top if you wanted, you know, to, to keep it closed because it's not that full or, you know, whatever. Um, they, and the, they're really good buttons. So that's what I was talking about, the purse inserts. And I got this on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Oops. <laughs> and then... Um, you can just take your little insert. This was my idea instead of putting in a um, a lining. Take your insert and you put your insert into the bag. And then there's still plenty of room to fill the insert with, you know, say you're going to the beach. So you got your sun lotion and everything else in there. Your brushes, your combs. Uh, your smokes if you if you're a smoker and then there's still plenty of room for towels washcloths baby wipes um, and even on the top you can still put towels on the top drinking things like juice containers pop bottles like the inserts are a great idea I just think the insert is a really really great idea so that way you don't have to have worry about lining the bag so just a thought just a thought but anyway I'm here just to show you how to build the bag so this is the bag <laughs> so we are all done thanks for joining me guys um, and another shout out to Rainy for the suggestion she wanted the uh, the bag done so she is a member and a subscriber so she's a great supporter of my channel so I just wanted to give her another shout out thank you very much Rainy for the idea I hope everybody enjoys Rainy's idea. And I'll see you in the next video.